Justin has just done a whole lot of thanking and it's now our opportunity to thank him uh, for what he has done. And so I'm going to invite a few people up, Justin and Wendy primarily. If you two can come up, that would be wonderful. But we have a, a cast of thousands who want to uh, line up to talk about Justin. Uh, we've got the AUC president, George Munoz. Pastor George Munoz, could you come up now, please, too? Um, we've got the former president of the uh, North New South Wales Conference before, Justin John Lang, who's coming up as well. No, Russell, you just stay down there. Um, <laughs> we've got... We've got uh, David North, um, who's a long-time member of the executive committee who's coming up. And uh, against my better judgment, we've also got Russell Halliday. So, Russell, if you could just come up as well. <clears throat> we might get Russell out of the way first. Um, so, Russell, I might uh, hand the mic to you. Oh, you've already got your own. Okay, uh, thank you for your kind words, Paul. It's much appreciated, mate. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, we've really enjoyed uh, working with Justin. Have we got the slides on? I just want to show a few pics, um, give you uh, a bit of a sense of uh, the last six years. Okay, so here's the, uh, Justin with the former president of the uh, Australian Union Conference, Pastor Chester Stanley. <laughs> Is somebody talking in the background? Yeah, um, yeah so um, Justin was um, um, kind of secretly hoping for that job, actually, of the president of the uh, Australian Union Conference, and so he was uh, getting very friendly there. Um, um, so here's Justin looking at uh, Pastor Chester Stanley's suit to see what sort of uh, attire he should be wearing when he's uh, union president. He was um, just admiring the suit, and um, that's why he's wearing a suit today. It's very nicely. Um, and then uh, there's nothing better than uh, actually uh, taking the place of Chester at the pulpit while Chester's looking on. So... Um, Justin didn't make a big deal about it, he wasn't really ambitious or anything like that, but uh, we certainly um, <clears throat> know those secret ambitions. Um, he used to uh, really uh, like the Australian Union Conference uh, to the point where um, he used to come back and debrief with Paul and myself every time we went down there, you know, for meetings and President's Council and all these sort of things. And uh, he used to just uh, explain to us um, how we um, used to in enjoy the uh, time down there. He used to stay very calm and collected and just talk through and get out of his system all the different things that he used to discuss down there. Now, of course, um, Justin grew up as a kid, just average kid. He was um, happy, contented. Uh, he used to enjoy life. And um, uh, even before he could talk, though, He'd worked out this way of expressing himself even without words so that he could let his mum and dad know um, what he uh, didn't, uh, didn't like. So here he's just explaining to his mum he doesn't want green beans for lunch uh, without saying a single word. One of um, Justin's great passions, for those of you that don't know it, is um, V8 supercars. And um, he certainly um, likes to, you know, do up cars, um, you know, some with a bit of power in it, and um, particularly if it's got, um, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of guts. He also um, takes, takes a lot of pride in his vehicles and <laughs> is very conscious of keeping them in mint condition so they can't get scratched or, or dented. So um, <clears throat> a little bit extreme, I would say, at times. However, um, it certainly does keep the cars in mint condition. Um, now, what you'll find is um, if you happened to work at the conference office is that he's always fiddling with everyone's car and unfortunately, um, you know, you might come out to drive home of the night and he's got your engine in bits all over the lawn or something like that and you can't actually go home. And here he's been sprung, unfortunately, for him, um, just wrecking Linnell's wheel. <laughs> so, um, just finally, Justin, um, one thing that, that I've really appreciated about, about you is the fact that... Um, Above all else, you um, regard the Word of God as the most important thing. And uh, what we're going to remember you for, uh, mate, is um, the fact that um, you are a man of prayer and a man of the Word of God. So God bless you and Wendy. Amen. Thank you so much. I'd now I'd like to introduce the President of the Australian Union Conference, Pastor George Munoz, who'd like to say a few words. Yeah, come on, come on over, guys. 
come forward. Thank you, Russell. I, I think that um, that description was extremely accurate. <laughs> Not only, uh, not only uh, Justin did that when he came back, but he did it at the meetings as well. <laughs> so uh, it, 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 it is a very, very accurate depiction. But uh, when I was told that uh, there was going to be a little time when we could actually share a few things, I, I, um, I was given the possibility to come and I said, yes, I would love to, love to be here. Some time back when Justin share with us what his intentions were. I um, talked to him on the phone a few times and uh, then I said, don't make a decision just yet. Let me fly up and we'll talk. And uh, he chose this place isolated from the people so that we could not be distracted. And uh, we counted how many church members that came to 11, 11 of them that came uh, and, and distracted us from the conversation. And part of the reason why we came up is that we wanted to be sure that uh, his decision and their decision was uh, well thought, that they had actually invested heavily in prayer to make sure that what they were doing was the right thing. And uh, I have to say we were not able to convince them to, uh, to stay back. So it is with a sense of sadness today that uh, we stand here ready to farewell a conference president. And at the same time, it is with a sense of excitement that we stand here to welcome a pastor to the field. And uh, as it has been said, what a, what a wonderful, wonderful move. For, for them. God calls us to different roles and ministries at various points in our lives and we trust that where he places us is where he can best use us and where we can best serve him. And that was one of the things that Justin kept saying to me, George, the time has come. I really, really long to go back to the local church. And I really value and appreciate that because it is in the local church where things happen. At the conference level, we may have a very small influence, but it is here with all of you. When you go back, that you will be able to change things for the kingdom of God. The call to be a church leader is an interesting one. And I probably do not have to tell, tell you the, the long hours, the pressures, the demands and the challenges that accompany that ministry. He started with more hair and, uh, <laughs> and now you can see him. However, Justin has borne this well and has displayed a dedicated and steady attitude, always having at heart the growth of God's kingdom. That has been his passion. And every time at the union we discuss something with the other president, there is Justin putting forward what he feels will grow the church of God faster, quicker, and more efficiently. Justin is a passionate pastor, and he has channeled this passion into the work of God, into evangelism, and into reaching the unreached with the good news of the gospel. The number of initiatives that have come out of this conference, while he has been the leader here, are varied, and they speak clearly of his desire to fulfill the gospel commission. Not all his ideas have been conventional. Not all our conversations have been conventional. But it has been that audacity that has brought new ways of moving forward the kingdom of God. He has cast a vision for outreach and growth in this conference. And his enthusiasm and drive has contributed to it moving forward and maintaining the momentum that it now has. Justin, we will miss your persistence and passion for Jesus and for the people as part of the team. However, we know that it is that same passion that will now go into starting a bonfire in a city that needs a change. And we look forward to what will happen in Canberra, the national capital of this wonderful country. It is one of those most unrepresented cities in this country. 
And we just pray that as you too go there, the Lord may use you mightily for his, uh, for his kingdom. Jesus will be with you. And Justin has not uh, labored alone. He has had the support of his team at the conference as well as the support of local churches and members. But more importantly, he has had the strong and untiring encouragement and love of his wife, Wendy. Sometimes we speak of the leader, but behind every leader, there is a bigger leader. And Wendy, we say thank you to you today as well. Without this, and in spite of what the conference officers may think, not half of what has been achieved would have been accomplished. Just like her husband, Wendy has also, she, she also has a passion for Jesus and for sharing the gospel. And we will also miss her, but know she will be a wonderful blessing and asset to the Canberra National Church. We know that God will go with you both and he will continue to carve a path and purpose for your ministry and for your lives. We wish you God's blessing as you embrace this new challenge and continue to grow God's kingdom. And on behalf of the Australian Union Conference, may God bless you abundantly. Thank you for the friendship. Thank you for the years where we have labored together. On a personal level, Justin is not just a colleague, he's a friend. And one, we can call each other, pray together, talk about ministry, dream together, and we know that God has a new chapter in the life of Wendy and Justin. And we just wanna pray that he may bless them abundantly so that they may continue challenging more people so that they may come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We did not know what to give Justin and so my colleagues, the other presidents from all the other conferences said to me, let's not give him anything just yet until we come together as presidents and say goodbye to them. And uh, somebody suggested to give him a cap, red cap, that would read, make North New South Wales great again. <laughs> we thought that probably that would not be appropriate. Today we just have a, a very small gift. We look forward to the time when we will say officially goodbye from all the other colleagues, but may God bless you as you continue in this ministry. Hopefully you'll enjoy and be buddy. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you so much, George. Uh, the first church that Justin went into when he graduated from theology here at Avondale was the Coffs Harbour Church, I think I'm correct in saying, under the leadership of Pastor John Lang. And right from the beginning of his ministerial journey, John Lang has very much been a mentor and uh, Justin obviously followed John into the role of president. So we'd uh, like John to say a few words as well. Thank you, John. Thanks, Paul. Let me tell you, I'm not coming to Canberra though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Justin, um, it's 20 odd years ago since you came out of college and uh, you came there to Coffs Harbour and we both went there the same year and began in Coffs Harbour together. And it was really important, I suppose, for, or I felt anyway, to be able to establish myself. But Justin is, is a really um, a great leader. And, uh, you know, for the first five months, I suppose, Justin and I worked closely together. And uh, we worked mighty, mighty hard because I was pushing him and he was pushing me. And I can remember that we got to about May and Justin said, man, I've had it. And I said, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> But we, we, we had a, a really great time. You know, Justin, when he came, um, had just a full head of wavy red hair. But look what presidency does to us. 
<coughs> and I was standing behind George and George, I'd like you to turn around <coughs> because it's on its way. <coughs> I can remember um, Justin had at least 12 Bible studies, might have been more. And about 18 months after we'd been Coffs Harbour, um, Justin was called to, to Grafton. And of course, I had about a dozen Bible studies as well, but I had to take over Justin's Bible studies. And he was trying out some, some different series of Bible studies, and this one was studying this, and this one was studying that, and, and you know, I think there was about a dozen different Bible study series that he was trying out. And when he, when he handed them over to me, I had to remember that this person was studying that and they were up to this part of the series and it nearly sent me around the twist. But we had a wonderful time and, um, you know, out of that time, I guess I'm the longest person who has worked together with you. And uh, it's been a, a real privilege. Um, in fact, it, you know, we're very good friends and uh, I, really, I really cherish that, uh, that friendship. But I, I just want to say that I, I want to thank you for the vision that you have and the vision that you have been able to convey in this conference. And I trust that that vision will not die. It needs to continue because I believe <laughs> I believe this conference is on a roll and, uh, and we pray to God that that will continue. I want to also thank you for your passion for evangelism. I remember that first year we were in Coffs Harbour. I said, look, let's, let's just settle down and and let's just get to know the people. And No, 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 we need to run a, a series. So we did. <laughs> but anyway, I also want to thank you for your love for the church. Um, Justin's a guy who would die for the church. And uh, I want to thank you for your love for the church. I want to thank you this afternoon, especially for your commitment to stand up for right, though the heavens fall. You know, Ellen White wrote a, a statement in Education, page 57. The greatest want of the world is the want of men. Men who will not be bought or sold. Men who in their inmost souls are true and honest. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle is to the pole. Men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. And Justin, you're that man. I also want to thank you for your support of the ministry team. To me, it has been second to none. And uh, I just want to thank you for that. I also want to thank you for your love for your family. You know, sometimes in ministry, our families can be left aside a little. And especially in presidency, I don't know whether folk realise that 90 or 95 hours a week is a common thing. And I want to thank you for your love for your family. And uh, as George has said, I want to thank Wendy. I want to thank Wendy for her, her support of you, her love for you, her love for her family, and her love for um, the church as well, and her support in, in, in your ministry, and especially in your presidency. Mate, I want to say God bless. I said this once to you before when you went to America and that, that just about blew me away. But when you told me you were going to Canberra, I thought, mate, this guy doesn't like politics. 
And here he is going into the centre of it. But anyway, God bless. I know that you feel and you believe with all your hearts that God has called you. And uh, as I said to you when, to when you went to America, if you feel that God has called you, God bless, man. God bless. David North has been on the Executive Committee for the last five and a half years as a lay member. And I've asked him just to say a few words on behalf of the lay people of the conference. So his words are, are on behalf of all of you. Thanks, David. I'd, I'd just like to add to really what John Long has said. Um, I'm inspired by the direction I see our conference going in. Um, when I see initiatives like Arise, Arise Express, the Leadership Weekends, so many of these things are there to encourage, empower and motivate us. And I see our conference more as a movement and less as an institution. And I've been working closely enough with you, Justin, particularly um, through the formation of a rise at Kingscliff, to understand that any of these initiatives only happen because of a team. But whenever you start or try or initiate something new, there is always opposition. And sadly, it's come from unexpected places at times. And you have borne the brunt of that opposition. And what I respect most about you is that I've never seen you flinch. Once you've felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit that we need to achieve or initiate something, you are unwavering in your commitment. And I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank you for the example that you have set for the rest of us. So. Thank you so much, guys. Justin, Wendy, I just wanted to say a few things as well. In my view, Justin is the finest leader in the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Australia. I absolutely believe that. And wherever he leads, whether it's in a conference or in a church or in his family, he's going to have impact. He's going to have influence. It's certainly not going to be the same going into the office tomorrow um, without the wisdom and the wit and the passion of Justin to sit in that office over this side of the room and know that he's not in that one over there is going to be challenging, there's no doubt. But I still have his number on speed dial and uh, I will be calling from time to time. Um, while we're certainly going to suffer loss, I guess I just want to reflect on something that Ty said, that really he is going to the place where he can have the most influence in the local church. And we, at the conference, are very mindful we uh, remind ourselves every day that the local church is the most important institution in the church structure. And uh, that's where Justin's going. So he's going to, uh, in a sense, a better place. Justin, on a personal note, uh, we've done a lot of praying together, mate. Yeah. We've, uh, we've battled through some challenges together. We've experienced a lot of joy together. One of the things I'm really gonna miss, Justin lives about 800 yards from my place. And in order to get to my place, I have to drive through a roundabout and his house is just on the corner of that roundabout. So I sort of go through the roundabout, look at his place, and I know that everything's right in the world because Justin still lives there. Um, <clears throat> he no longer does. The removal truck's turning up tomorrow. And the worst part of that is that he has a fantastic tool shed and I have no tools. And many, many times I knock on his door, Justin, I need a drill bit, or Justin, I need a power tool. And he's got the lot. Um, if in your packing you discover something missing, then uh, there's a fair chance it's at my place. Thanks, mate. It's been an awesome journey. I really, really appreciate it. I guess the, the friendship, the mentoring, the they've said it all, but uh, I've really appreciated the journey with you. It's been an absolute pleasure. And we've got a couple of things from the conference. I'll, I'll just be brief. Uh, everything I've needed to be said has been said. But I um, am so grateful to Paul and Russell. Wow. Um, what a team. And uh, I, I'm, I'm not supposed to be getting emotional now. I'm actually really excited to be going back to a local church. I'm going to miss this conference enormously because I look out and... I know so many of you personally from the local churches. I, I started here as an intern and uh, it's 
It's been awesome. But uh, Jesus hasn't come yet. And there's a lot of work to do. And we all need to be willing to sacrifice and commit to do that work wherever it is, whenever it is. And the proudest thing for me are the pastors, uh, the team we have. And that's the hardest thing to leave. But uh, God bless you. Justin, Justin, if you just come back up. I just want to have a prayer with him. Stay standing. Let's have a prayer together. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, uh, our hearts are hurting, but they're also celebrating. They're hurting, Lord, because such a dear friend, such a mighty leader, such a mighty man of God is leaving our midst and going to another place. But may we not be selfish. May we not retain the blessing to ourselves, but may we spread it liberally around this country and around this world. Lord, thank you for the gifts you've given Justin. Thank you for his desire, his willingness and his passion for using them for you. Send him off with the anointing of your spirit, we pray, and with the blessing of each of us. And may you do mighty things in Canberra and beyond that uh, until that day when you come and we all reunite on the sea of glass, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks,